We've all seen that guy that's thin, athletic looking, but he looks pretty old. You're like, this guy looks healthy. He seems to eat well, he exercises a lot, but he's insanely wrinkly and he just looks old. He looks like the Dos Equis guy. But then we have these other people that are a little bit more, let's just say, voluptuous. They're fuller bodied and they look young and youthful. And it begs the question, be like, does losing weight actually help us age better? Okay, it's a really difficult question to answer entirely, but we have some data when we look at things called PARPs, when we look at various mechanisms, uh, sirtuin activation, things like that. So let's dive into this and take a look. I put a link down below for Thrive Market. I know this is a relevant pitch for them, but at the same time, it makes sense. There's a 30% off discount link down below. Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store, and it literally is their mission to make healthier food more available for people in areas that cannot get healthier food. They really wanted to make sustainability a real thing and be able to get real good unprocessed and even healthier processed food options into people's hands. So that link down below is a 30% off discount link for whatever you choose. You can fill up your grocery cart using that link, 30% off plus a free $60 gift. So 30% off whether you choose some beet chips or whether you choose Siete tortilla chips instead of regular corn chips, or if you want jerky snacks or this or that. And a lot of the times it's gonna be much, much cheaper than you would find at many grocery stores. So that link is down below. It's in the top line of the description underneath this video. And again, 30% off and a free $60 gift. So we have to look at a couple of things when it comes down to longevity, when it comes down to aging, right? There are these things called sirtuins, and they're heavily researched, and sirtuins are signaling proteins that may have very powerful effects when it comes down to longevity, because downstream, these signaling proteins signal metabolic shifts that could be very powerful for just, I don't know, feeling better and feeling youthful, right? One of the things that they potentially do is, at least in mice, they've demonstrated to activate what is called FOXO1. Now in humans, FOXO3 is heavily, heavily researched in the world of being a powerful antioxidant defender, but also very powerful at improving the metabolism, especially when it comes down to longevity. Okay. Now, additionally, sirtuins can activate what is called PGC1-alpha. Now, again, in mice, but easily translated into humans, we just don't have the exact data to look at, right? So in mice, it improves mitochondrial biogenesis making it so the mitochondria is more efficient at utilizing fuel. But what does this have to do with weight loss? Well, there was one study that was published in the journal Hepatology. Okay, it demonstrated that when subjects went through gastric banding surgery, when they went through like a gastric bypass and they put a lap band on them, okay, when they did that, they found after they lost weight, they had an increase in sirtuin activation. This is very important because a lot of times when you look at studies, like there was one that was published in the journal Endocrinology and Metabolism, demonstrated that obese people had lower levels of sirtuin-1, sirtuin-3, and sirtuin-7, which are probably some of the more researched sirtuins. Okay, so when we're overweight, we tend to have a lower level of sirtuins. And when we lose weight, they seem to be a little bit higher. So if you're looking at sirtuins, as really one of the pinnacles for longevity and youth, then yes, we could potentially say that losing weight allows these sirtuins to be activated more. But there's a bigger piece that I really wanna focus on. Okay, it's something called NAMPT. Now, NAMPT is very imperative for what is called NAD. NAD is nicotinamide adenide dinucleotide. Now, NAD is like a fuel that our cells need. If we didn't have NAD, we would be just dead within 10, 15, 20 seconds. Like almost all our cells need it for instant fuel. Okay, it's involved in metabolism of different fuels. Anyway, long story short, NAD is very, very important for longevity. Okay, NAD activates sirtuins. Okay, so when we are, for example, fasting or in caloric restriction, we have more NAD available because what NAD normally does is it helps carry fuel into the mitochondria. Now, when it does this, it becomes bound up and not used, not able to be used, okay? It can't do other things because it's tied up in metabolism. But when we're not eating, for example, when we're fasting or anything like that, we have more NAD available. And this NAD can then go and potentially activate sirtuins, which can potentially activate prolongevity genes and things like that. So where does this NAMPT come into mind? Well, again, the same study was published in the journal Endocrinology and Metabolism demonstrated that in obese subjects, 
NAMPT was very low. Now, NAMPT is required to form NAD. So if we don't have NAMPT, or we have low levels of NAMPT, we have lower levels of NAD. So it's a which came first, the chicken or the egg in an obese person, right? Low levels in AMPT means low levels of NAD, which means lower sirtuin activation, which means less FOXO3 or potentially FOXO3, less PGC1A, less just youthful metabolic improvement, right? And potential repair. What's interesting about this study is they had subjects go through a 12 month aggressive weight loss. At the end of the 12 months, they saw improvements in sirtuin activity. But one of the things that I was excited about the most is they saw an increase in NAMPT. So when subjects lost weight, they had more NAMPT, which means more potential NAD, which means more sirtuin activation, which explains why their sirtuins were activated more. So this gets me really excited because this does show that from a biological age perspective, someone that goes through a serious amount of weight loss or even just a little amount of weight loss, we could see an improvement in sirtuin activation. And we can elucidate from a lot of the rodent studies and yes, some of these human studies like this Journal of Clinical Endocrinology Metabolism study that they do play a role in terms of how we feel and just longevity in general. So although it's a little bit complex, it definitely makes sense that someone that is allowing their body the ability to have more NAD well, that allows them to activate all this you know, labyrinth and cascade of different things that affect how we feel. So then why does someone that is super athletic and super fit sometimes look older? I mean, I guess I should address that since I opened the video like that. A lot of times that just comes down to an oxidative stress kind of thing. Okay, someone that is running their body into the ground as an athlete or doing a lot of running as they get older, that doesn't always mean that they're going to look youthful, right? That puts a lot of stress on the body. That's oxidative stress, oxidative damage. And we also have to remember that as we get older, as we have that occur, we have something called PARPs. Okay, PARPs protect the DNA from mutation from oxidative damage, from things like that. Well, those PARPs, guess what? They require NAD as well, okay? So there's a balance. If you intensely push yourself and you're exercising so much to an extreme that you're actually causing stress, then some of that NAD has to come in to protect the cell, protect the DNA, okay? Whereas in someone that is really getting just the right amount, then that NAD is able to activate sirtuins rather than activate PARPs. So there's a balance there. Bottom line is yes, the science does seem to demonstrate that losing weight can have a positive effect on aging. I'll see you tomorrow.